Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to cover the time delay property of Laplace transforms. First, let's just look at what this is. Let's say that we have some function, uh, and I'm going to use a very simple one. Let's say that we have f of t, and it's a unit step function. So I'll draw that in red and it goes up to 1 and it starts at t equals 0. So let's say that's t equals 0. Um, now let's draw that function delayed in time just a little bit and I'll call that one g of t. And let's delay it 2 seconds. So it's up here at 1 and it took off at 2 and it takes on the, this uh, amplitude of 1 starting at 2 seconds. Now we have the uh, a way to express the unit step function using this funny uh, 1 uh, of t. It's actually not the numeral 1, the number 1, it's uh, a, a function. Right? It's defined as being the unit step. Now, delayed in time, g of t is equal to that function, t minus 2. So we can see that the argument of this function becomes 0 at time equal 2, and that's what causes the unit step function to take off and turn on and become a value of 1. Now, if we take the Laplace transform of f of t, we could do it formally or look it up in a Laplace transform table, but we'd get 1 over s. If we take the Laplace transform of g of t, we would get 1 over s e to the negative 2s. Now, One way to describe how the time delay property works is if you're taking the Laplace transform of some function that's delayed in time by capital, let's say delayed in time by tau seconds, then you take the Laplace transform of the undelayed function and just multiply it by e to the negative tau s. If you apply that idea to this example, we can look at these two functions and say, if we started here, we could say, oh, we have a step that's delayed in time by two seconds. The undelayed version of this function is the unit step. And its Laplace transform is 1 over s. And so to get the Laplace transform of the unit step delayed in time by two seconds, we take 1 over s and multiply it by e to the negative 2s. So that's how it works. Um, let's go ahead and take the Laplace transform of a slightly more complicated function as just a one more example. So let's say we have h of t is equal to e to the negative 3 t minus 7 and I'll multiply that whole thing by the unit step that turns on at 7 seconds. If we were to look at a plot of this function, h of t, switch over to red, at t equals 0, it's exactly 0. As a matter of fact, it's 0 all the way up until this unit step turns on. And I'm going to say that, that point is right there. So let's say that is 7 seconds. At 7 seconds, this turns on, plug a 7 into that, and we have e to the 0, which is 1. So it jumps up to 1, and then it exponentially decays down, like so. So this is 1. So there's a plot of our function. Now, when you see a function like this, where every occurrence of time is actually grouped with t minus some constant, it's clearly a time-delayed function. And we can see that here, and so the untimed
time delayed version of this would be e to the negative 3t 1 of t. And I don't really need to keep multiplying by that in the undelayed version because when I take the Laplace transform it'll go from 0 to infinity. But it's nice to write that just to, kind of, just to remind ourselves of what um, uh, is happening with that function. Uh, so let's go ahead and calculate h of s. I take the Laplace transform of the undelayed function and that would be 1 over s plus 3 and then I key off of this and multiply it by e to the negative 7s. Done. So there's the Laplace transform of that time delayed function. That's it. Works every time. So thanks again for watching and this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech.